identity was a good movie. The How color blue is a lie. I don't know what else to say. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Don't waste my motherfucking time! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, are you saying born identity over 007? Just for the record. Dude, I said nothing of the sort. Okay, nothing of the sort. I'm just checking because you said it was a good movie, and then you didn't mention Bond at all. I don't think, and so I'm just just wanted to go on the record there because I would gladly take Bond any point in time. In fact, a Jason Bourne movie, although it's good, I would also replace it with two ignorant, uninformed, ill-advised, self-deprecating morons ranting about opinions they have no right to have, which are probably wrong and absolutely do not matter. <laughs> that was good. That was a good segue. I'm impressed. <laughs> Our goal is to convince you that where we hail from just outside Washington, D.C. is not just a city of politics and scandals, but one brimming with art, music, and culture, as impossible as that may seem. So listeners, now that you know why you're here, I'm Keith and 13 miles away from me is my co-host victor victor why the hell are you there this week actually this week's been kind of a bitch <laughs> oh all right well <laughs> i didn't know you had to take the gloves off for the show but uh to, i don't know man uh let's see a hurricane put my island back into the stone age i need to keep reminding you that you do not own an island <laughs> uh i do now <laughs> you now it's, own it's, an island 93 million dollars billion dollars in debt oh. so you're gonna lend them some money well all i need to do is not have money to buy it right right anti-money and you've got it perfect yeah i've got a lot of not money <laughs> but anyway they have like no power and it's expected to take up to six months to get power back to the whole island that's crazy i've spent my week like Trying to get a hold of family and reestablish communications and blah, blah, blah. So it's it's actually a nice break to get to do something that's recreational for, you know, for a change. Well, let's ask the most important question. Have you contacted everybody in the family? I have. Good. Yes. Is I everybody safe? To, everybody's good to go. They are trying to get out of there. Uh, the soonest <laughs> they can leave is October 3rd. Jeez. So they're yeah no the, the airport's completely backed up there are mile line line mile long lines for everything and you wait three hours for a gas station and then you get there and there's no more gas and they have no way to refill it you know it's just it just sucks now it, it sounds like that's not terribly impressive because this show is basically gonna come out on the third so people are gonna be like oh so like today that's not hard but we're we recording on the twenty sixth yeah we record record. ahead of time usually. Between Tuesday and Thursday, the the week before, so a week to get a fl- an emergency flight to get the hell out of there, where right. there's no electricity. So, um, well, I'm glad to hear that they're all right, and um, I know they don't have electricity, but if they do get a generator, I hope they catch the show. And <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> it's very well, important. Keith, uh, well, I'm glad you're here. Yes. Which is, you know, you're always remarkably entertaining to make fun of for oh, an hour. Thank you. But we have we have a lovely lady. In the studio here oh, today. Stop. Oh, oh, that stop. is true. Yeah. She is closer Somebody than Somebody get me a tall glass because I just found me a big drink of water. Mm. I don't. Wait, hold on. Who That's not how that goes. Wait, now it's hello? weird. Uh, hello? <laughs> Who are you looking at? That tall. I don't. Are you? I am average. You're looking at a different stream, I think, than we are. Are you watching porn while you're doing the show? <laughs> I've I told totally you. totally do that. I could get away with that. Yeah, do not watch lesbian porn while we're doing the show. It distracts you every single time. Let me tweet about it real yeah. quick. <laughs> me or the porn? <laughs> well, both. Me in the Damn, porn? Girl. Wait, what? Are you Wait, my now we're listening. Hold on. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think we found the way that we're going to make this popular. I feel like I have a really strong marketing plan on this. Um, so in studio, we have Andy <laughs> Apple Roby from Diva Fit. Hooray! Yay! For those that don't know, can you tell us a little bit about what is Diva Fit? Diva Fit is a pole and aerial silk studio. Oh, Ta-da. yeah. So a lot of people don't know this. So for a long time, uh, pole dancing, obviously the thing uh, that you kept your daughters from doing. That was now, your one now job a as a father. Thing. Yeah, it's now becoming a legitimate sport. I think, did it get Olympics yet? No, or? no. 
they're trying to bid it into the Olympics, right? So, yeah, because right? the whole Olympics thing is so very difficult. And so you've got to put your bid in right. and then you have to get accepted as like an exhibit sport. Okay. And because it would be considered a uh, summer sport... I, I Why? Don't, I don't know. Uh, well, you, we don't wear a lot of clothes. You don't want to put a tongue on one of those in the winter. Exactly. That's the problem. And we don't wear a lot of would clothes. You, would you either. put a tongue on it in the sport anyway? Well, you never know if you're going to push the envelope a little when it comes to competition. <laughs> how good are you at pole dancing? <laughs> Not good, but okay. I know how to put my tongue on a pole. <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> Looks don't work on radio, for the record. I know, I know. <laughs> you just gave me a look like, uh, uh phrasing. Phrasing? <laughs> are, are we doing phrasing? Hello? <laughs> I can't believe we're not doing phrasing anymore. Right. So, um... Wait, so, I had something for this. So not an Olympic sport, but definitely an international sport. I've seen competitions. Oh, very much. So. It's huge in uh, Eastern European area. Las Vegas. Um, we just had two that's weeks ago. That's in Europe. Yes, yeah, so that's very international. <laughs> two weeks ago, we had um, an been... international competitor from uh, Poland come and give oh. us a workshop. It was amazing. <laughs> they should be really <laughs> good. You right? had a Polish. <laughs> Shockingly <laughs> enough, people from Poland are really good at pole. <laughs> It's just like in the finals, I expect like Poland versus uh, Poland. Antarctica. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. just, ah, yeah. There's a. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I bet you uh, Mrs. Claus is like the champion of champions. Especially since she does it on a floating pole. Oh. oh. Are we getting dirtier getting some now? Science. Yeah. Is that what's going on? I'm getting some science. In yeah. There, that's there's totally no science. land on the North Pole. All I know is I oh saw... Oh, baby, oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is I saw a YouTube video of a pole dancer, and in one of the moves she did, which I'm sure is right now like super popular, but at the time, uh, I think she was the only one doing it. And it blew my mind because she kind of went like upside down on the pole, and then she like walked in the middle of the air down the pole. Oh, like, yeah. Like, so yeah. it looked like oh, she yeah, was that shit's intense. taking steps like in the middle mm -hmm. of the air and she would go down just increment by increment. So it was like miming. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah, there's there's that. And then there's um, the the strongman climb where yeah, you hold on to the pole. Yeah, she's upside down. Yeah, where, or you hold on to the pole and it looks like you're walking next to it. You're, oh. you're standing <laughs> yeah. upright, holding onto the pole in the middle of the air yeah. and walking. As, as you go around in circles. <laughs> I've seen one uh, where it's a, a woman or a guy, or a, guy a dancer yes. with, um, you know, they're gripping the pole towards the bottom uh, and their feet are straight up in the air and they just hand over hand climb up the pole, holding their body vertically up without mm -hmm. like their feet on it, whatever. And it's like, that's um, that's more strength than I will ever have. Yes. yes. I will never be that strong. You see way more guys that. doing that. Oh, Diva <laughs> Fit is an open gender studio. Great. We okay. We have uh, men and women. Um, so that's a, a new development. We're starting to encourage more guys to come because they can do like these crazy upper body strength moves. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I would so pole dance if I wasn't so far away. You, I'd be there every you day. You are the pole. You know what? Ouch. There are studios up Rude there. Keith. There are studios up there. So speaking yeah, of studios. Yeah, but it wouldn't be our guest stars uh, studio. <laughs> That's true. So speaking of studios, D Diva Fit has two locations. Correct. Uh, one in Herndon mm -hmm. and one in Falls Church. Um, so if anybody wants to reach out and, and be a part of that, they can go to www.divafit.online. Find out more information, sign up for classes and things like that. Yep. The really exciting thing that's coming up, because obviously you learn how to do pole dancing. It's really good uh, for fitness. And those things are all really encouraged. Yeah. But, fitness, whole pizza in my mouth. Yum. <laughs> but uh, really what's uh, pretty cool is you have a competition coming up. Correct. So mm -hmm. uh, what's happening with that? How does that work? So um, Diva Fit is doing an in-studio competition. Mm -hmm. So... Um, we had we had four different levels, okay. um, and we went through preliminaries a month ish ago. Okay, so there was a filtering, and these mm -hmm. are the people that got through. And that. these, this is the finals for the wow. Mister Miss Diva Fit. Oh, okay, so, very cool. And three uh, students in each level made it, and we'll find out who wins 
yeah. you know, in each level. And that's happening on November 4th. Uh, do you know what day of the week that is? That is a Saturday. Saturday, November 4th at the Waddell Theater in uh, on the Nova campus in Sterling. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, we'll talk more about that later. Um, hopefully, uh, the public's allowed, of, obviously, to of come. Of course they so are. Of course. If people want to check we out. We encourage it. Yeah. And absolutely. we encourage wooing. Woo! Yes. <laughs> wooing Very is Very important. Right. Uh, less, less, uh, don't bring singles. That would be the... <laughs> right that not needed I, i'm cowbells you okay, know okay you know <laughs> tickets are twenty dollars but you can just bring a whole twenty dollars you don't have to do it in singles right um all right well so, i mean if all you have is thong dollars which sounds like uh likely <laughs> that's the, yeah just wrong. wash them first man just that's, wash that's them all first. we have eh, just that's air them out whatever really, it's money it's, it's already spends, dirty it's right. spends it's La- fine launder your money is what she's saying <laughs> i don't think you know. that's legal perfect um so uh, <laughs> without further ado, as uh, we are um, soon to be in the news for laundering money, uh, here is our favorite segment, uh, the weather report. Exactly next to our other favorite segment, this week in history. But are you ready for a house of pain? <laughs> and then our favorite segment, ending the show and going home. Oh, yeah. And then our favorite I'm... segment after that, getting drunk until we fall asleep. Hooray! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> and then our favorite, Another wasted then, hour followed by a wasted hour. Yeah, and then Victor uh, watching more lesbian porn. <laughs> His favorite segment. Hooray. More lesbian. Can it be more lesbian porn if it's just constantly, it's ongoing, it never stops? Uh, yeah, Technically, you, I only watched it once. Mm-hmm. It's like two pairs of scissors. You can always have more scissors. What? Anyway, yeah. welcome to the weather report. <laughs> Keith and I have scoured the internet for interesting we- uh, weather, interesting news <laughs> stories, and you get to decide whether or not they should have been news. We've Are they changed worthy? Change the format. Now we just talk about weather. <laughs> hey, so there was a hurricane. It's been really warm recently. Yeah. Was it weather or not? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm no. Sure. I bought a new car. Is it weather? That's yes, that's not. That is definitely weather. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> All right, tell us tell us your weather report. Anyway, the opening salvo. Gwyneth Paltrow has opened a new shop which sells sex dust and psychic vampire repellent, and it's not cheap. So basically, yeah. Okay. Gwyneth Paltrow is trying to scam you. We went into detail earlier in the show, in the history of the show, about how Gwyneth Paltrow was trying to kill you. She's trying to kill us? Yes. I never heard anything about that. Don't worry was about that. We'll talk about that later. Oh, okay. I promise we'll get to it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she's got a, a, a brand new shop and she sells essentially bullshit. Sex dust is just glitter. And I don't know if you guys know. Okay. But once you have glitter on you, you can never get it off. So it's like herpes. You know, it's like a, a permanent walk of shame. It is the herpes of the yeah. craft world. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> herpes of photography, they call it. <laughs> and psychic vampire repellent, which I'm seeing a picture here. It's a clear bottle with, it could be a clear fluid in there, or it very much could be empty. <laughs> I don't know. But people are buying this shit. It's, and it's, it's expensive. Do you think people buy the empty bottle and then are like, and then just start spreading the empty everywhere, hoping that it'll work? Yes. Maybe it's, um, you know, just a gas that's good. vampire. Yeah, that was good. Repellent. Thank you for that pause. Stuff. That was perfect. Um, uh, it would seem like the best repellent for uh, vampires would just be a vial of blood that you could throw like you would a steak for a dog. <laughs> like Throw it over there. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, there's blood over there. Oh, go get it. Go get that blood. Go get that blood, vampire. Get it. Get that blood. <laughs> Just make sure you live near a blood donation place. You'll be fine. Yeah, You'll be exactly. Fine. You'll never have right, to worry about it. Right, that doesn't attract vampires. <laughs> <laughs> and we know this how? Right. Uh, don't worry about it. What I do during the day is none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, if you want to buy uh, some... You know, uh, supplemental sex energy, it'll set you back about 50 bucks. What? <laughs> For a bottle of, uh, I'm sorry, I could... sonically tuned gem elixirs. What are you talking about? I could just go buy sex for that. You pretty much could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just say. Get yourself a steamboat willy or something. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm just saying that you don't even need the, the elixir at that point. You've gone to the end result. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So Gwyneth Paltrow is trying to scam you. She was trying to kill you. She's trying to kill us. I She's haven't heard about to... this. What? Don't is worry there about news? It. I promise we will get to it. Oh, okay. I can't wait. Okay, Keith. But 
Andy, is it news? No, it's not news because Goop has been trying to scam people for years. Cock and balls. Oh. <laughs> Thought I had it. Same old scam. <sighs> and uh, this is the woman who told women to put jade eggs in their vagina. Wait, I'm listening. Yes. Nope, that was the thing. That what? that happened. Oh, hell yeah. I would do that. You Quinn's have a vagina? famous for like... I mean, I could find one. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow's famous. There's like a 10 minute video of her on YouTube yeah. just giving really bad recommendations to people like, really you should bad. do this. I'm like, no, that causes mm-hmm. cancer. You should do this. You no, should that will kill you. Va- she has a thing about vaginas. I mean, sh- you have to steam your vagina. You have what? To put go- yes. To get the wrinkles out? I guess. What, is, <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Herbal steaming. They got a steaming. lot of folds, man. There's a I lot dude, of folds in vaginas. Dude, she has a, she has a fixation. She has a fixation. Like steam. She, she probably has a perfectly ironed vagina, though. Yeah. <laughs> steam is hot. I don't think I'd want that. Like, if you were like, no, you need to steam your balls, I'd go, well, no. they are wrinkly, so I understand that. But no, no. that's not going to happen. <laughs> not at all. Am I putting hot stuff near my balls? No. How about some tiger balm? Nope. 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 Huh. Icy nope. hot? Yeah. Nope. Huh. It'll make you run faster. I know it will. I I believe you. I believe you. It's the only you. way to stop I'll, at the agonizing pain. Yeah, I will try to run faster than my own balls. That's how fast. <laughs> <laughs> like, get away from me. Oh, my God. All right. All so, right. So goop is not news. No. All how right. about you, Keith? What do you have? <laughs> uh, these are my favorite moments in life. So, uh. Here's something that you need to learn about the world, right? And that is that because there are so many people and so many things happening, there are coincidences all the time. Coincidi, perhaps, is what we'll call them. And they're brilliant. Nothing is more brilliant than systems that put out random, like, characters and numbers. Because <laughs> you said put in- out. Because inherently, we all become, like, eight-year-olds. When we realize that the random numbers and characters turn into something that we all snicker at, this is an excellent example of that. So all the cool kids are voting on marriage equality. Some of those voters a little more observant than others, obviously. Uh, Have you ever looked at the letters and numbers below a barcode to try to make sense of them? Nope. not. So if you look at a barcode, you'll see there's numbers and letters correlating to what the bars actually mean. Mm -hmm. Right? So the barcode is actually just a way to scan those numbers and letters. Yes. I only see numbers. You're showing... Yes. You're showing us a barcode on a radio radio show. show. Uh, (laughs) We've already discussed the fact that my facial expressions are not going to work. Uh, Barcode, probably not working either. Last week, we learned that uh, we learned, uh, we did all these very visual things and still have not learned. Visual doesn't work. Yeah, so... um, (laughs) How many barcodes do you have just sitting right there? (laughs) I mean, what is that, four, five? Oh, God. (laughs) Your entire life is barcoded. (laughs) Um, So uh, these are randomly generated uh, codes, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, There's an algorithm that creates these codes. And um, many of those algorithms will make sure that, like, Certain combinations don't show up. That's in... not a barcode. That's a QR. All right, code. I'm done. I promise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. I'm literally still showing barcodes while Keith is trying to go on with his yeah. jokes. Uh, so they they'll they'll have like uh, rules that don't put certain letters next to each other and stuff like that. Uh, in this case, there was a mail-in ballot in Australia for marriage equality, and one voter had a barcode that included the words "bum sex." <laughs> <laughs> That's totally news. <laughs> that is so news. Yes. Yep, I'm Aust- not even mad. That's news. <laughs> Australia sends out same sex marriage survey with barcode bum sex. Which he, I, assume, I hope he voted for it at that point. He's going to be no, like, cor- well, I mean, obviously this is a sign. <laughs> like, even if you're, if you're like very religious and you're like, God doesn't want it. I'd be like, Oh my God wants this. God, God. <laughs> it's a sign. Yeah. It's a sign. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I got it. Hey, one to zero. I got one. I titled this um, this article Ten Year Beard." You know how, um, like, the people will accuse a, a, a man of they're like, "Yeah, you're married, but we're pretty sure you're gay." So you know, the the wife is what they call it the beard. Mm-hmm. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. the disguise. Okay. Well, this is a ten year beard. Woman dates man for ten years yeah. until she finds out his sickening secret. Are you ready? That's the clickbaitest way to say no, that. Right? Yeah. You're way into clickbait these days. 
Holly Udy, who was in a relationship with Todd Colop for a decade, said she was shocked when he was arrested for murder. I knew it was something Whoa. that really didn't sit right with me about him, but I couldn't put my finger on it. <laughs> the guy, apparently, he had uh, this big property out in the woods, and when they finally caught him for murder, they yeah. found bodies upon bodies <laughs> upon bodies oh, in the, on this land. The guy was a serial murderer, Jesus. and she dated him for 10 years. So He pleaded guilty to seven other killings, including the murder of four people that had gone unsolved for 13 years. I'm wondering if he, you know, only four of them were unsolved. If right. three of those did get solved, why didn't they catch him sooner? Right. You would think so. All I'm thinking is, did the wife, like, after finding that out and he got arrested, go straight out to the store and buy a lottery ticket? Because... <laughs> well, I... The chances of that, right? Right. For 10 years, she was literally living with a serial killer. Either and... she's like the most amazing person ever. Right. To keep him from just killing her. Just going off. Or she's like really boring or something. I don't, I don't know. How, this, do, how do you go she with says, that? Yeah. He gave me a lot of attention. He made me feel like I was important. Of course, you're the cover. <laughs> You're the only live one. If he's one. killing people, he doesn't give a shit about you. <laughs> of course he's paying attention to you. He's literally wearing your skin right now. <laughs> she later learned that uh, he had used money she'd loaned him to buy the storage container he used to lock up a woman named Miss Brown, who they, uh, she was, she escaped. She was the reason he got oh, caught. Okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, he I told her that he needed to store supplies. <laughs> this is the, um. This is like the strongest evidence ever that I would use to tell our listeners, practice getting good at oral sex, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> I'm just saying, right? It had to be something, it was something. something, right? I'm going out on a limb, but he had to have been like, I don't know. I kind of want to murder people. And then he like get a BJ and he's like, oh, but this one I'm going to keep around. Like, I don't know what it was, but it, there's something. There's a strong likelihood. Either it was, she's like amazing right. at everything or it would be really weird to find out that like she just had really thick skin and he kept trying to stab her <laughs> and, like she's it, actually like 568 pounds right. she's got stab wounds all over her body she just didn't feel them she, yeah. didn't, know. she didn't know she didn't know she didn't know nope. she, and he's just sitting there going why won't she die <laughs> stabbed her 282 like, times then gave up and drowned her in a bathtub and that's why he's <laughs> but she wouldn't her. fit in the bathtub so right. you know at 568 pounds probably not yeah. is it news though i think that's kind of news that's 13 yes. bodies did yeah. you say that's a lot yeah, that's a lot of bodies all right fair enough <laughs> that's a lot that's what you got for us keith uh so uh here's a <laughs> Here's one of my favorite science experiments ever. So uh, science experiments teach us about the world. NASA experiments brought us disposable diapers, those little stupid milk pouches you get in school lunches now, and most importantly, Tang, right? Of course. Sometimes Word. the experiment <laughs> leads to exactly zero practical application, however. Actually, this would be, most of the time. What's that? Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, case in point, uh, scientists scare the shit out of guppies to see if they all react the same. <laughs> yeah, this is a funded study that figures out uh, only that different gumpy, uh, guppies react differently. In other words, they have like their own personalities. Some are more scared than others, right? And uh, Or maybe just some are more blind than others. Maybe. Say, some are more perceptive. I'm guessing they probably took some of this into account. I don't know. Was this a study on murmuration? <laughs> All I know is I love science. <laughs> Just because if it was a study on murmuration, that's kind of cool. That's the mm -hmm. thing that the birds in the in the like Bees? flock. No, yeah, uh, yeah, flocks and um, like the the fish balls and and the birds. Oh, and, right, and the, like the, how they all like they all move yeah. in unison. It's called murmuration. Yeah, no, I don't know if it was that. It makes it sound more like they were curious if each fish was unique oh, in some way. Okay, and uh, they fish determined, are mostly dead anyway. Yeah, and they determined yes. In related news. Next week, we'll be using the same method to determine if infants have personalities. <laughs> Boo! Boo! Ah! They have already done that. Right. Actually. Oh, yeah? 
Do you want to hear about that experience uh, experiment with, uh, I think it was like, like little baby David. I don't know. Did they put him and on that guy's farm? Is that how they did it? Worse, <laughs> worse. They closed him in a room and um, <laughs> they presented like a little furry white fluff ball. Yeah. And then hit a gong behind him oh when my they God. showed it to him. Scared the shit out of him and he sure. cried every yeah. time. And then they presented mice. Yeah. And then rabbits. And mm-hmm. eventually they wouldn't hit the gong and he would see something furry and white and start screaming in terror. <laughs> That's just a Pavlovian response. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly what they were studying. That's and, what I call uh, dating. If they could classically condition fear into little <laughs> furry, cute white things. Yeah. Eventually he wouldn't go near men with beards and, and yeah. uh, he could just freaked out and um uh, i forget whatever uh board got a, a hold of it they were like this is completely immoral yes. we gotta stop this right now and they never desensitized the kid <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so right now they're like okay so we're just gonna need to use this cotton ball ah! <laughs> right <laughs> we just need to swab your ear why <laughs> why are you crying what's wrong with you imagine an adult like that i'm just imagining like you know, as somebody like just is like at, at the office or well, something. He just opens up a new bottle of aspirin. And right. The, the, and there's, the, oh, God! Just, there's a little <laughs> cotton ball in there. Can you open this aspirin for me? It's psychologically <laughs> terrifying. This, this aspirin is scary. Guys. Aspirin's scary. <laughs> yeah. Sadly, uh, we found out later that due to poor medical uh, treatment, he didn't live past like the age of seven. Oh, God. Oh, well, he was terrifying. in a hospital. He got sick and the hospital made him worse and he died. But mm-hmm. anyway, happy times. Yeah, Stupid so... man filmed climbing, clinging to wait, a train. Wait, news? Didn't we? Did we do that? Oh, wait. The f- we were going to skip that. I was going to say, uh, the, the fish? Yeah. The, the, Scaring fish. Fish are Is unique. it news? Yeah, fish no. are unique and we're yeah. going to scare them. No. Oh, They're sorry. mostly dead. Yes. I got one. So a theme on this show is um, criminals doing stupid things. And for me, people or animals avoiding bus fare. Uh, So stupid men filmed clinging to a train just by the wiper blades as it travels at 70 miles per hour. Thank God it Uh, wasn't raining. Right. (laughs) 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 <laughs> By clinging to the rear of the train's windscreen wipers, it speeds along the tracks at 70 miles per hour. Yeah. When you don't want to ride with the filth on the train, but you just got places to be. <laughs> the ongoing thing My question saying. is, how did the operator of the train, the not conductor, not notice? It was the back window. <laughs> oh. He yeah. stuck to the back because the train doesn't what turn around there? on the tracks. It can go in either Wait. direction. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay, hold on. Yeah. My brain now works. Thanks. Hi. <laughs> Welcome yeah. back. Hello. Why don't you just look in the rearview mirror and be like, there's a dude in the back window of this train? Well, train. It's long. Because it's... there's a train between you and the... There's Shut many up, cars. Keith. Hello. <laughs> but yeah, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> he was detained and arrested, which I was disappointed by. I was uh-huh. like, that's clever and innovative. And they were like, uh, we're not going to take you in. We're taking you straight to a mental hospital for <laughs> health assessment. But we have to go by train. <laughs> and you have to I pay think your the guy's pretty clever on the outside of the dream. I yep. Know. So is it news? You know, I don't know. How about this? It happened in Australia where everything, including the train, wants to kill you. <laughs> there is that, yes. Australia. Everything wants to kill you. Also, yeah, everything in Australia is a little bit bigger. Mm-hmm. So I think that turns it into more news. I, think I was so. going to say, also, I have some money in my pocket, if that'll help. <laughs> you're also far <laughs> away. All right. Unless you're passing that through Skype. I mean, is That's that a true. thing? All right. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Last my but best. not least, I will make this super uh, quick because we're running out of time. Uh, hurricane victim, victims call sex hotline after FEMA mistakenly tweets wrong number. Fucking FEMA, man. Literally. Yeah. Because they keep <laughs> the messing fe- everything up. Yeah. The FEMA for, uh, Region 4 office tweeted out an offer to assist people dealing with damaged roofs. Unfortunately, due to a mix up between 800 and 888, Floridians in trouble ended up calling America's hottest talk line. Do you need relief? Because we can get you relief. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> was it Florida? How hard is it not to tweet the yeah, number 1 800 suck your mama? I assume it's Florida. Yeah, Region 4, I think, is it I don't know, down there. Because oh, I'm going to say that's well, like right Floridians. Al- yeah, Floridians. Okay, so that's right along the lines with Florida Man. 
Yeah. And anything Florida man is news. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Yay. I think that ties it up. I like to think that they called in. They're like, hi, I need a new roof. And they were like, so you're saying you're topless? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, technically, yeah, yeah but yeah. I don't understand why FEMA's asking it that way. <laughs> All right, so we ended up tied up for the weather report. Hooray! The, the best way to end the weather report so that neither of us taunts the other for the rest of the week. So I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna. Well, because you had Australia. That's true. You had Suck Australia. Keith mm-hmm. had Florida man. I mean, that in and of itself is kind of a tie, too. Is it? Oh, okay. I think so. I thought it was Germany and Florida. I mean, well, in, you know, in Australia, you get guys who will actually say, I ain't your mate, mate. <laughs> well, you just wait until I tell you why Gwyneth Paltrow is trying to kill you. But anyway, more importantly. <laughs> he, wait, she's trying to kill us? I don't even hear about, about this. Is there like news or what? So, Andy, welcome to another wasted hour. Hello. Where the where the points are made up, and what is it? No, where the scoring's made up, and the points don't matter. Yes. Hooray! I like that you've welcomed her show her to the show thirty minutes into the show. <laughs> so you're doing a, a competition. So there's a there is a competition November fourth at the Waddell Theater in uh, on the Nova Campus in Sterling. Yes, and the points do matter. And the points do matter. <laughs> Interesting fact, though, you're participating in this competition. I am, yes. So you made it past the preliminary. Yes, I did. You're now into the finals. What level are you of the four levels? I'm level three. Level, So that's pretty high up. Yeah, it's okay. That means the poles are taller? No, or no, it means... They're wider, <laughs> harder to hold on You got a two foot tall We're going to like, it's like 12 feet around. We have to like <laughs> shimmy up them like, you know, like right. loggers. Uh-huh. <laughs> like loggers. <laughs> Or it's like the uh, the rope in gym. It just goes like 50 feet up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Level four, they grease it. That's just it. <laughs> yeah. And so I've got a new sport that I'm thinking we should go with here. Um, I'm so down. Can you share with us a little of what your performance is going to be like? What, uh, what are you doing? So I am not a traditional pole dancer because... Hold on oh. a second. Traditional values is not what I go along with to- pole dancing. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So most people think pole dancing, they think sexy, right? Because, you know, strippers is kind of what most people, most people's yeah. minds go to, right? Yeah, it's that and firemen. Yes. That's the only two <laughs> yes. who are often strippers. <laughs> <laughs> but um I'm kind of awkward and kind of clumsy. <laughs> All right. Welcome so, to the show. Hi. Yeah, we're an awkward clumsy <laughs> show. <laughs> so I f- no wonder I feel like I fit in so yeah, well. You really do. Um so the whole sexy kind of vibe low yeah. kind yeah it it's very difficult for me to do <laughs> i've not, had a number of instructors at diva fit go yeah maybe not for you that, this is <laughs> <laughs> i mean the pole dancing the tricks and the but yeah. the sex <laughs> flow see there where you're trying to seduce if instead of that you could just not do that well yeah exactly <laughs> if you could do the opposite that'd be great you know my my way of of seducing someone is to go hey you look cute w- want to go to my mm-hmm. let's go right hey <laughs> so, good yeah. question if so i subtlety. was <laughs> good question would you murder me <laughs> I have this storage. I have this storage container. I have a storage Wait, container. <laughs> Wait, totally. you can use it. In order for you know the uh, the courtship to continue, what is the right answer to that question? <laughs> well, you'd have to answer to find out. Yeah. But um, so my shtick, I guess you could say, is that I tend to go with geeky music. So okay. I did a competition in April, and I used a video games uh, song. Nice. Um, so, so soundtrack to a yeah, video game. Sound- <laughs> deep, 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 Exactly. That's when I was running out of time. <laughs> and then this upcoming, I am doing um, Weird Al Yankovic. Oh, great. White and nerdy. <laughs> nice. That's fantastic. So, yeah. So, what was the video game that you did the first time? Um, so I did the end credits to Portal 2. Oh, okay. And so The cake song? Um, the other one. The cake song is from Portal 1. Portal ah. 2 is a song. Same concept, but the song uh-huh. is called Want You Gone. And I dressed up 
like the sociopathic robot. So I dressed up like GLaDOS. Like GLaDOS. Yeah. yeah. So this one I'll be in the I'll have glasses and, you know, pocket protector and, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, the whole You should write kind your name thing. on your underwear. Um <laughs> there is a point where I will be lifting up my skirt so that you can see my name on my underwear. Yes. Perfect. Nice. There um, we go. You know, and then I have a competition uh, about six months ahead okay. that I've already started thinking of, and I'm doing a song from The Legend of Zelda. So, oh, <laughs> so this has kind of become like a thing for me. It's That's like, great. If it's geeky, I'm yeah. gonna probably try and do um, a pole dance song, you know, a pole <laughs> dance routine to it. You realize there's nerds everywhere right now with boners. I've got right, listening to the show going, Possibly. That's everything I've ever wanted. <laughs> Oh my gosh! It's a pole That's dance amazing. to Legend of Zelda. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh I'm God. not the only one who's doing a Legend of Zelda song in April. By oh, the way, really? yeah, another girl from our studio is doing Link. another. Well, she's doing. Um, Link is definitely not a girl. No, Link is not a girl. No, but yeah. they, I, but you said that yeah. it was gender open. I'm it assuming is. it is. But <laughs> she could be Link if she wants. She's, nice she's recovery, doing, Keith. Um, nice recovery. She's doing Song of Storms, and I'm doing a Midna's Lament. So oh. just, I mean, just throw it out there. <laughs> Very cool. Now, if people come to the show on November 4th at the mm -hmm. Waddell Theater uh, on the Nova Campus in Sterling, is there like a popular vote or anything? Can they participate in the judging at all, or is um, it just audience? It's... Audience participation in that, you know, wooing is very much encouraged. Woo! We, yes, we want everyone to like enjoy the show. Yeah. Um, but no, there there are judges. We have um professionals from other studios coming in to do the whole judging. Oh, one, okay. Yeah. You know, so what criteria could you possibly use to judge a poll? They're like, yeah, that was awesome, is end. Well, you've got good song um, choice. She yeah. fell off too. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. If you, if you can't if you try and do a move and you can't do it, well, mm -hmm. obviously you're not going to score as high. If you try and do um, higher level moves, yeah, so that could get you more points. It's um, like figure your, skating. It is. Yeah. It, your musicality, your use of your song is is a huge part of it. Um, Are you going to take a pipe to anybody's knees to win this? I am not. Uh, then no. you don't really want it. <laughs> I, um, I I have a fake knee. I yeah. know how much that hurts. But historically no. speaking, if you want to to take the uh, the gold, that's the way to do it. And have it taken away from you. That's that, the, that's the, fair. <laughs> speaking of history, uh, we have our second favorite. Uh, These fa segs are amazing. Thank by you. the way, second favorite Keith segment is good at this game of the show uh, this week in history. Keith and I have scoured the interwebs and the history books and encyclopedias and what have you in order to bring you everything that ever happened in the world on this particular date. I like the and fact your that you, job. you searched things. I just asked people. I just went around <laughs> one by one with like, do you know anything that happened this week? Anything at all? Any? No? Okay. That's fine. Well, and about you? Uh, um, apparently, since the beginning of the show went the way it did, I have to reveal to everybody that I am a vampire. So I was just there. <laughs> I just remember. That's but true. you get to pick, at the end of the segment, you get to pick what with the most important uh, event in history is to you. Ah, Victor's a vampire. Throw blood. <laughs> Over there. <laughs> Call Gwyneth Paltrow. She's got the anti-vampire <laughs> yes. anyway. In 1779, one of my favorite people, John Paul Jones wins a battle in English waters. Mm -hmm. He uh, During the American Revolution, he had a ship called the Bonham Richard. Correct. Uh, commanded by John Paul Jones, one of the <laughs> first privateers. He was basically the first hired pirate. Yes. Mm -hmm. He uh, found himself in a battle with the uh, English ships, the Serapis, if I'm saying that right, and the Countess of Scarborough. Mm. They immediately wailed on his ship and damn near sank it. It was completely disabled. And they were like, so you give up? And famous quote, I have not yet even begun to fight. Nice. That's so it. I'm thinking y you probably should have started when they did. <laughs> However, <laughs> in, a, in an a astounding point. come from behind victory, Phrasing! he uh, sank one ship, took the other, and then the next day his own ship sank. So he sailed home in an English, an English vessel, uh, victorious with a bunch of prisoners. Nice. Like a fucking boss. He then uh, went on to become a pope and then be the <laughs> bass player of Led Zeppelin. 
So <laughs> right. a lot of people. Also, don't know he that. saved this box full of puppies, kittens, and babies. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and then scared them to see if they have personalities. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's a rabbit! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, um, according to Mormon founder Joseph Smith in 1827, uh, he is given a set of gold plates by the angel uh, Moroni. 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 It's Moroni. Moroni. Macaroni. One of the two. <laughs> using Morani. a pair of. <laughs> what? Moroni. Moroni. Uh, using a pair of magic glasses, he translated these into the Book of Mormon. Da, da, da. Yes, that happened. In where, where are the magic glasses? Uh, we lost them. They're, uh, they lost the gold tablets too. Yeah, they're all gone. But the angel on top of the um, the temple. Yeah, that's Maroni. Oh, okay. He's just, still still just hanging yeah, out. Yeah. All right, cool. That, that you know, when Has, you drive around the Beltway, yeah, that's him. Nothing better. Does to he do. realize that that's an inanimate object? <laughs> well, they all were. You know. Um, <laughs> no, I think uh, every time he was asked about it, he's like, oh, I translated magic glasses from the gold tablets from the angel and made this book. Where's that other stuff? Oh, oh. customs. <laughs> it's in a I have it in it's in a storage bin. If you come this way, I'll, <laughs> I'll just show, show you the this. storage bin. Yeah, I have a storage here. locker that I'd love Don't to Don't mind show the smell or mm -hmm. the screaming. Um so yeah actually growing up one of my best friends was mormon i probably shouldn't make fun of this religion no you should totally <laughs> make fun of it they have magic underwear i was just gonna say magic they were happy people yeah oh they're very lovely they'll help you move and stuff and then tell you how to love jesus it's great they're very nice yeah never mind <laughs> <laughs> anyway in 1846 the eighth planet in our solar system was discovered i know hey. what you're thinking no it was not uranus it was neptune ah. however they used uranus to find it oh yeah yep they like looked instead of it. like searching you know yeah. I, I realize the night sky is pretty big but if you get more or less where the orbit of things are you can probably find a thing or two sure no they did it with math. They were like, mm, we could look at it or we could measure the effect of what's it called gravity on the surrounding planets and therefore yeah. deduce that there is something there. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, just look at it. So you what you're saying on certain nights, what you're saying is they found Neptune by a movement from Uranus. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Everybody got that? Because uh -huh. we yeah. are now. That was good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Welcome to Uranus. Uh, the history <laughs> report. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> We're fast forwarding uh, right. over 100 years. Mm -hmm. In 1960, on this date, was the first Kennedy-Nixon debate. And it was the first presidential debate to ever be televised. Really? People, Yes. People who watched it were like, oh, yeah, Kennedy. Kennedy fucking won the shit out of that. Mm -hmm. People who listened to it on the radio were like, Nixon, Nixon won, won the shit out of that. <laughs> uh, the reason being, Kennedy, being much younger and better looking, decided that uh, I'm going to be on TV. I'll wear makeup. Oh. And Nixon was like, mm -mm, makeup's not, for women. Right, I'm not, not doing thing. it. Not a thing we do. And uh, also, he was very sick. So he looked pale. He looked sweaty and clammy and terrible. Oh. And everybody was like, I don't even want to look at you. Right. Much less vote for you. <laughs> so that's why uh, this nation is what it is today. Hooray. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, so uh, fast forwarding 11 years from that. Happy birthday. Thank you. To David Vetter. Anyone who know, know who David Vetter is? No. Is he He's, Eddie Vetter's dad? Uh, good guess. No. Uh, since uh, unfortunately he only made it to the age of uh, 13. I'm guessing he didn't have... Eddie Vedder during that time period. He is Did better he go home in a box or a bag? Uh, technically a bag, more of a bubble. So he is known as the bubble boy. Oh. And uh, he spent most of, his, most of his life inside of a protective bubble due to a severe immune deficiency. The film, The Boy in the Plastic Bubble, uh, which was uh, in 17, or 1976, starring John Travolta, was inspired by the lives of both him and Ted DeVita, who lived most of his life in a sterile hospital room. So a bubble boy born, born in 1971. Unfortunately, uh, his demise happened in 1984. Uh, Suspicious, big brother. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 1993, 
Uh, the first person to ever go over Niagara Falls in a barrel. Twice. No. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, no, no, that's not when that happened. Yeah. Somebody. I'm a vampire. Des- I was there. Somebody <laughs> decided to go over Niagara Falls once and then was like, hold on. I got an idea. And did it again. That is hold John. my beer. Yeah. John David Monday, spelt with a U, um, made the 176 foot drop for the second time. He had also done it in 1985. So at least he had a little bit of a break in between to heal, I assume. <laughs> right. Find all his limbs and glue them back on. Yes. I, I imagine he's like a crash test dummy. The barrel hits a rock, splits open, and then it hits the button on his chest and just, poof, his limbs fly <laughs> off. I was going to say, That's did he come I home imagine. in a box or a bag? Right. That. A bubble. <laughs> Another person in a bubble. Uh, this is my favorite story. One of my favorite like historical stories of irony. Uh, this happened in 2010, so in our lifetimes, we'd remember this. Uh, James William Heselton, he is the British on- entrepreneur who uh, had just bought the Segway company, backs off of a cliff while riding an off-road version of his scooter. Segway, yeah. <laughs> yep. He died oh, what a riding a Segway, which the company of which he owned. Which I was like, that's that's awesome. I mean, sad. It's totally sad that a millionaire died on a Segway. But it's also pretty awesome that that happened in terms of irony. So that is a list of absolutely everything that happened this week in history. Nothing else occurred. Um, that is untrue, sir. That Nope. We scoured Uh-oh. all of the people I could ask in person. And that's all we came up with. So your job is to let us know of that list or something else you might be aware of. What is the most impactful thing in your humble opinion using whatever criteria you feel is viable? On this day, in 1974, Mm -hmm. my baby sister was born. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but that's stupid. That's why we didn't put it on the history. Well, see, here's the thing. History report. Now, I I don't have to call her and say happy birthday. I I had it. (laughs) I had so that on nice. my list. this day on twenty in twenty seventeen, yeah, I totally sk- skimped on a birthday present <laughs> by just saying that. <laughs> Although it's gonna be, hold on, is right, it today? This won't be released, until, or is it until on the third when oh, this no, comes out? I'm telling her her birthday present's being delayed, and then she has to go listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like her. Yeah, <laughs> she's oh, she's, she's plotting she's got the brain thing going on. So yeah. I would say because that saves me, yeah, a lot. But I can understand that. But yeah. if I have to choose from your list. Not necessarily. <laughs> I'm going with math and I'm going with science. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm such a geek. Fair enough. That, that's super awesome. She's going me. with Uranus. I, I am mean, going Neptune. with Uranus. She's all up in there. <laughs> uh, yeah. For the record, your uh, your baby uh, sister's birthday totally on this list. We just didn't have time to get that's to it. That's right. I, I was going to mention it. it. I see. We're you know we're running late. Yeah, we're, we're running we, long. Yeah, I, I get mean, you. Just, I yeah, get you. Didn't have time. <laughs> really sorry. I was going to say it, and then yeah, we just that's fine. Uh, got all caught up with the Segway disaster. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, so Speaking that happened. Falling off of a cliff. <laughs> yeah. How's the show going? It is. <laughs> I saw that coming from a mile away. You know. Speaking of segues, <laughs> I saw the um, gravity so... you were producing <laughs> with your statement. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> um... So I've been. I, I was thinking uh, before we started the history report. I was wondering. Yeah. Uh, you guys could hold your own competition about who can pole dance. To the worst song, the worst song for said, uh, what's the activity? Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Oh, uh, what uh, would be the worst pole dancing song of all time? I know it. I know what oh, the worst song is, but I want to see what it. you guys come up Before with. Before you say that, I'm going to say to the people that are listening: if you have an idea for one, email us. We'll 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 go yes. over it on the show. I would love to hear this online at anotherwastedhour.com. Send in your uh, suggestions or tweet us at uh, tweet us at a wasted hour, um, or find us up on Facebook at another. Yeah, wasted just hour. feel free to Facebook message us. Yeah, and just message us or put it on our wall. Tell us what you think would be the worst song to ever pole dance to. Victor, what do you think is your A number one? No, I wanna I wanna hear what you guys say because In I'm gonna win. Vita. 
in a Gata de Vida, pretty good. Pretty good. What That's do you got, exhausting. Keith? Exhausting. <laughs> it's because it's so long. Exactly. Just the drum and solo. And the drum you're... solo alone. <laughs> you just get as stoned as they were, and then you'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, but then the audience would have to be just as stoned. And I mean, yeah. that's a lot of it drugs. It's fine. <laughs> God, this is a lot of drugs. This is man. tough. The worst one that I can possibly think of. Um, yeah, you got that, this, Keith. I know you can do it. You think? You think I can do it? Um, not pole dance. Come up with a song. Mm, Keith could totally pole dance. I'm sure I, of it. <laughs> no, I could not. <laughs> I could fall off of a pole and die. That's what I could do. Um, yeah, I don't know. All There's right, gotta be. Uh, do you want to go? Doesn't matter because I'm gonna I'm gonna ruin I'm gonna ruin everybody's day here. Okay, the worst song ever to pole dance to. My heart will go on. Oh, see, I was gonna go with that one, but cause, sure, because that one that's a Celine Dion one from the Celine the, tit- yeah, the, song yeah, from Titanic. the Titanic song. But right? I feel like you could do stuff to it. Here's my number no, one. Uh, the the thing is, I Mm-mm. think I've seen. To yeah. Shut up! Oh my gosh! I, think I have, so. to, meet, I have to meet this person. I yeah. believe. I, be, I bet you if you if you YouTube that, I guarantee yeah. you're gonna it's find sultry. at least one. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's thing. I got the number one. I think. I've I've narrowed it down in my head. Okay. Uh, Yakety sacks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think would be the worst pull down to. No, sorry. No, I could see an entire group routine. I, I, oh my gosh. <laughs> Get like 12 women and a guy. Right. I mean, just go full on Benny Hill. Just no, be done with it. At that point, that sounds like a Three Stooges act. Yeah. <laughs> That's the that's the only you're, one I can come up with. You're talking to someone who is actively working on a routine to white nerdy. Come that's on, that's true. <laughs> I think you should put on a yakety sax competition because that would just push all the borders way out. Um, right. If you want to get if you want to get rid of any sensuality at all, yakety sax is the way to go. Because there's no way to do something sexy to yakety sax. We shall see. <laughs> I'm going to do it, Keith. Yeah. All right. It's yep. on. So if you guys have ideas, you're listening, please let us know what you think would be the worst. Because we just did this off the cuff. And I think there must be others out there that are even sure. worse. Um, and uh, I have a feeling there's probably some really like offensive, like, gangster rap or something that would work really well. Um, Bitches, hoes, and money, weed, weed. Yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that was a good one. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm curious to see what we get. Uh, with that said, uh, what I want to do is find out a little bit more about Andy and um, all of the things uh, that go into being the next Ms. Diva Fit. <laughs> I'm calling it now. I'm just calling my shot now. I'm just woo, saying. Woo. Yeah. Awesome. So, Only if right, people show up and woo. You got to <laughs> show up and woo for me. Yes, absolutely. For me. So this is a little. <laughs> Can I show we... up on Skype? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Heck yeah. I'll make you show up. Set up a laptop. Hold, and... hold the phone. <laughs> phone up. Mm-hmm. Perfect. <laughs> this is a segment called Near and Far. Near. Now go far again. Far. See, that's what it's all about. I understand. So this is where we're going to find out two stories from you. One that's close to home, one that's out in your adventures, uh, pole dancing or otherwise. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's, without further ado, start with Near. With Near. Yeah. Um. So. Don't be too excited now. I know, right? Far? Like, we can start with Far. Start with Far. 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 far we're starting with Far, with everybody. Far. Yeah, screw <laughs> it. We're doing it live. Boom. The only reason I say that is because... Here. But anyway, far. <laughs> home is terrible. <laughs> home, is, home is so sad. <laughs> um, Her so, body's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> there's a storage thing out back. <laughs> the screams and the sounds. And I don't even but know. But my boyfriend makes me feel so important. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Shut up, fatty. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so far, yes. um, I mentioned earlier, uh, that I did a competition in April, right? This is where you, uh, mm-hmm. you dressed up as Gladys from Correct. Portal 2. From Portal 2. Yeah. Um, I, just to throw it out there, I won my competition. What? I did. I we won didn't that mention that? No. You, that's the headline. You start off with PS, just wanted to let you know that I won a competition. Here are the details. Your headline starts with PS? Yes. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. That's, yes. That means postscript. You put that at the end, Keith. See? Right. See? So right. I did it as a post. -script. Right. Well, I'm just saying that there's nothing more you need to know about the story other no, than the fact that I won. You shut your mouth and listen. <laughs> Go. So did my competition. But the way comp they, they work is you show up early so okay. you can test the pole because every pole spins at a different uh, speed, blah, 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 blah. And they all have different The poles grips. spin? Yes. I thought people just had mad, like, metal burn at the so end of there's, it. So there's two types. There's static pole, where you're using your own momentum, and then there's spin pole, which is the one where you get a lot of the, the really crazy, um, like, the, the what I mentioned Spinning earlier. moves and yeah, stuff like the, that. The, it doesn't spin on its own. Like, it's not like it's motorized, No, 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 right? no, no, no. You have But to, it's on ball bearings, and you can, so, like, spin it. Oh, hey, we were talking about one of the scores is yeah. your momentum, your ability to um to control the momentum of because of course physics you move your body away from it it moves slower you get closer to it like a figure skater right now just more blah, blah, nerd blah. boners as yeah. we're speaking <laughs> but anyway so testing the pole right yeah i'm standing there at six o'clock in the morning what because it's a regional competition and you're allowed to test the pole once during the day and that's very first thing in the morning so it's wow. six o'clock in the morning i'm standing there i've got yoga pants on i've got flip-flops and i got a sweatshirt yeah Cause I'm like not awake. I've had like half a cup of coffee. This yeah. is ridiculous. I'm surprised you're not in a onesie. All right. Right. <laughs> well, of course you got to, to be able to climb the pole. You kind of need a little bit of skin because skin yeah. sticks. Okay, yeah. great. I'm standing there. The line is like out the door. I'm not even kidding. And I realize I'm like third away from being able to try the poles. I don't have shorts on mm. under my yoga pants. That's going to be tough. Kind of looked around. I have faith in you. Yeah. Looked around, kind of pulled my waistband out. Oh, okay. That's fine. That's fine. Get up. Drop I'm wearing, drawers. I'm wearing <laughs> black bikinis, <laughs> underwear. You just drop trow and you're good. Totally did my, my pull test up there for about five minutes. In your skivvies. In my underwear. Nice. N no one else did this, right? I assume. Oh, God, no. Is. Everyone else had their little, their, their fancy little shorts on with the, yep, nope. <laughs> you're like fucking. I'm like I, I'm not getting back in that line. You watch next year. Everyone's gonna do it in their underwear because <laughs> they're gonna think that's how you won. They're like, no, she was that's the only almost one. Almost literally ballsy. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, that's no, not. No, no. you're not no here. Icy but I hot required. No, no, no. No, that's not. Also, no, no. no she balls. outran them. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Before before I even came out of the womb, yeah. I had outrun those. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that was, and I get off the stage, put my uh, my yoga pants back on. Yeah. My instructor looked at me and said, was that your underwear? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm going to go get my coffee now. Yeah. She's like, that's a good idea. <laughs> we walked out. I don't care. <laughs> I was like, I'm going nice. to get my coffee now. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I like everybody else knew you were serious though, because you were like, "Fuck it, I'm doing this." <laughs> Done. Like, I can't. I can't even. <laughs> All right. Well, we so have... when you're when you're doing your Zelda routine, what are you going to be wearing? Um, I am actually going to cosplay, basically, uh, obviously with modifications, to uh, as Midna from um, Twilight Princess in her underwear. Midna, yeah, I know nothing underwear. about Legend of Zelda, so uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, that one, yeah. not Link. Not That's Link. That's all you know. Not Link. <laughs> and not Zelda. A hundred bad guys with swords is all I think about when I hear somebody <laughs> blue, you know. Oh, oh, you know, it's it's not, hey, listen. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just want picture. So oh, sorry, Keith. As I say, I just want somebody to come out and be like, it's dangerous out there. Take this pole with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous to go alone. Yeah. Take this. <laughs> right. And you're like, oh, and then you <laughs> just start, you. <laughs> you start your routine. It'd be amazing. <laughs> It's on a track, so you just pole dance through the whole game as the, the, the pole moves through every level. <laughs> I would, yeah, I would vote for that. I would woo. Oh, my goodness, we've run out of time. Oh, no. We didn't even get to near. We'll have to have you back on after the competition. Tell us how it went. Well, um, uh, without further ado, let's see what else is happening this week so we can let you know. Uh, Tuesday, October 3rd. Rachel Levin is at Jam and Java in Vienna, Virginia. Thursday, October 5th, the Yellow Tie Guy at the Lighthouse Dock Bar in Solomon, Maryland. Obviously, November 4th, put it on your calendars now. That's at the Waddell Theater in, on the Nova uh, campus in Sterling. Go to divafit.com. 
uh, online to get your tickets. Please like our posts, follow us, retweet us, share the show on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We cannot do this without you. Don't forget to review us on Facebook, iTunes, and Google Play. Thanks to Kevin Evinger and McNally22, Justin Rogers, Big Metal Records, Alchemical Records, and Engineer Adam, uh, Adam, who I haven't seen forever, for all of their contributions. Thanks to Victor, and most of all, thanks to Andy Abelrobi for wasting a perfectly good hour with us. This has been another Wasted Hour, and if you just realized that, don't blame us. We warned you.